Welcome back to Grow Your Impact, Income, and Influence, the number one show helping you reach millions, both millions of dollars in your bank account and millions of people you can influence. Today, we are talking about social media content, how to grow your business through social media. I'm joined by my good friend, Cody Cottle. If you have not met Cody yet, you are in for a treat today. Cody is absolutely infectious with his energy, his poise, and the skills that he brings to the scenes. I've been lucky enough to see him over the last three years grow his brand. He literally started off by doing a Facebook Live every single day. He grew an audience from that, and then he started off selling them coffee mugs and moved through to building a multiple six-figure business. He moved from Michigan to California. He's absolutely amazing. You guys are in for a great treat. Cody, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? So good. Such an honor to be here with you, Steve. And, and as you were saying that, it's crazy thinking back that the first product or service I offered was a Motivation Everything coffee mug to where we're at today, where we have clients paying us five grand a month. It's crazy. It's awesome. I mean, I've gotten to see your growth. We're going to step into what this looks like. Um, you're one of the few people that I've seen. I mean, so many people try to break into social media marketing, growing their own business, and you just like soaked up knowledge from the people that were around us and you started implementing and watching your growth has been absolutely amazing. Where did all of this kind of start for you? Like where, where did your journey start? Because I just know you from when we first met and you were doing the motivation, everything stuff, where did this actually start? Where did you get the idea to go live every day and like learn to present yourself like that? Yeah, absolutely. Well, in order to, to tell you and your audience that I got to take you guys a little farther back in my journey about who I am and why I even wanted to do this in the first place. Uh, for me, my story's a little bit different than most. Um, at three months old, my father went to prison. He's still incarcerated today. I was raised by my mom. My dad was a biker gang leader. And because of that, I grew up in a home without a father. Um, and at that, I grew up in a really poor home. Uh, we grew up in a small town in Michigan called Alamo, right out of Otsego, which is right side, outside of Kalamazoo. That tells you how small it was, <laughs> a couple thousand people. And growing up, uh, we didn't have money. And we were evicted from a home, you know, three times. I lived in a car twice. So I knew struggle at a young age, Steve. And, you know, I, I always ask myself, is entrepreneur something, entrepreneurship something you're born with or something that's developed? And I don't know, but I feel like it was a combination of the two for me because there was only two ways this was going to go. I was going to repeat history and follow the way that my family was, or I was going to create my own history. Uh, so at 13 years old, I, I told my mom, like, hey, I'm going to start my own business. I was like, what do you mean you're going to start your own business? I was like, it's simple. We live on the small country road. We have like eight neighbors. I'm going to knock on all of their doors and offer to do yard work for them. So that was my first business, 13 years old. And I'll never forget the day I went over and I knocked on my neighbor's door, Steve. And uh, his name was Wally. And I knocked on Wally's door. And I'm like, hey, Wally, I would love to do some yard work for you or, you know, pick up rocks, you know, out of your yard, mow your yard, weed your garden, pressure wash your deck, whatever. I'll do anything to make a few bucks. And I, I often wonder, you know, he's, he knew our home was a little rougher than his. He was more prominent, had a nicer home, had a pool. Uh, we were more spaced out. We grew up in the country. Um, and I feel like he just saw this like young, ambitious, insecure, broken little boy. And he's like, sure, come over tomorrow and I'll find something for you to do. And that next day I went over there. He had the John Deere mower pulled out. It was such an exciting moment in my life because I never rode a riding mower. And for a young man in the Midwest, when you get taught how to do that and your first time riding the riding mower, it's a big deal. We grew up so poor, we just had push mowers. Uh, so I was pumped. It was a great experience, a great memory from my childhood. And when I got done, Wally, uh, it's like, hey, sit down. He's paying me five bucks an hour. And he's like, he slides me a Sprite. And he's like, I, I want to talk to you. He's like, tell me about yourself. And he begins asking me questions. And he's like, what do you want to be when you grow up? What do you care about? What are you passionate about? What do you feel like you're good at? And just no one had ever spoke to me in that way before. And I didn't realize until now he was mentoring me. And he was beginning to plant seeds and, and, and really, you know, put some confidence in this young boy. So much so that I started going over there almost every day after school he would find work for me. He had a business and I would work in his business and I would learn from him and mentor me. And we listened to Tony Robbins tapes and Earl Nightingale tapes. And I was getting exposed to things that I wouldn't have normally been exposed to. Now, Cody, why are you telling my audience this story? Because that man changed my life. Now, so much so that I moved in with him. 
And at 13, so I met him at 13, I moved in around 14. And when I moved in, I knew that Wally was, he was like late fifties, early sixties. He was getting sick. Um, and I could tell like he had something wrong with him, but it was never something that was talked about. And he sat me down. He said, Cody, I got to tell you something. If you're going to move in with me, he said, I'm dying. I have multiple myeloma cancer. Um, it's a, it's a bone marrow cancer that eats away at the bones and makes them extremely fragile. And I have emphysema. And when you knocked on my door that day, a week before the doctors told me I only had nine months to live and we're past that nine month point. We're at about month 11 at this point, and he'd already lived longer than he was told to live. And he said, I have to tell you this. He said, you've given me a reason to live again. And I feel I have purpose and I have someone to pour into, but I'm, I'm not going to live forever. I am going to die. And he did when I was 16 years old. Now, guys, this I just want to take a moment here to highlight something, Steve, in this story, the power of mentorship. The power of pouring into someone, especially older people that have some wisdom, had that man not done that for me, I would never be the man that I am today. So when he passed away, I had this encouragement and ambition and almost like call on my life because of what he did for me, that I wanted to be great for one, because he saw me as somebody that could be great. But two, I wanted to be for other people in the world what Wally was for me. And I began to dive into personal development. It became almost like my therapy through those hard times. And I started going to events and, and listening to speakers and this, that, and it developed this dream to want to be a motivational speaker, to want to inspire people to become the best version of themselves. That's how I got where I'm at today. Because in the journey of being a young man, coming from where I come from, having big dreams, nobody knew who I was. And I didn't know how to build business. I didn't know how to be successful. I'd had some exposure from Wally, but I knew I wanted to change people's lives. And one day, I, Wally taught me this. He said, go find the most successful people where you live, buy them lunch, buy them coffee, sit down with them, learn from them, because that's how he learned. And I was doing this. I'm sitting down with this really prominent guy in my town, and I'm telling him this dream I have of being this amazing speaker like Les Brown one day. And then and, and he's like, well, what do you have access to do that right now? I'm like, well, I, I, I need to make videos. I need to make content. And he's like, why aren't you doing it? I'm like, well, the camera I want is like $3,000, the lighting, all the stuff. I don't, I don't have the studio. And he just stops me. He says, stop making excuses. He said, do you have a phone? I said, yes. It was like an iPhone 5. He said, does it have video? I'm like, yeah. Can it record? He's like, I'm like, yeah. He's like, pull your phone out, start making videos and start changing lives today. He said, the only thing that's stopping you is the excuses that you keep making. So Steve, that's what I did. And I met Steve at a very interesting point in my journey because I met Steve probably about three years ago and I had been making videos for probably about five years or so inconsistently, gonna stop there for a moment, inconsistently, take a note on that. Wasn't until I developed consistency that I got results. But I had built a, a brand around Cody Cottle. It was CSC Inspires. Then it became Motivation Everything. That's when I met Steve. I had no clue what I was going to sell or offer or monetize or anything. So I started with coffee mugs, worst idea in the world. Bought them from China, but people bought them because they bought into me and they believed into me. And through that, I figured it out. What well, started with Facebook Lives. Then I developed a coaching program. We did $27,000 in a week off of a Facebook Live pitching to application funnel. And then we did six figures in under six months. Now I was off to the races. Now I had something. Now I had a proof of concept that I could scale. And in the process of doing that, other guys saw what I did. If you hang around on long, online long enough and you make content long enough, people get to know you. People begin to buy into you. And other guys started coming to me and asking for advice. Me and Steve were in a mastermind together. It's how we met. And Steve, uh, I don't know if you went to the Waco one. I don't think you did. And in Waco, Texas, a bunch of the guys were coming up to me asking for advice on social media. Light bulb moment. A business exists to solve a problem. I should build a business helping people with social media to build their personal brand. Out of that, Maverick Media was born two weeks later which is now called Content Daily. We rebranded and we help entrepreneurs all around the world build their personal brands online, leveraging Content Daily. Our focus right now is short form video. It's TikToks, it's Instagram Reels, it's YouTube Shorts, it's Facebook Reels. But here's the thing, the people I work with are busy. Steve, you're busy. You don't have time to be on social media all day. So I had to create a system and a process that allowed a guy like you to do that in 10 hours or less a month and put out videos every single day. It was a very hard problem to solve. It took, it took several years to get it to where it's at now. And now we do it extremely well.
That's awesome. So, I mean, you just took us through a whirlwind of stuff. I want to unpack just a little bit. When you were listening, I mean, I was I was similar. Like, I got exposed to Zig Ziglar and Tony Robbins and Dale Carnegie when I was like 13, 14, 15. And it changed my life because I remember I read How to Win Friends and Influence People. I was in my school library. And my librarian was like, I don't know if you should be reading that book because she had never read it. Like she just saw the title, how to influence people. And she was like, mm, I don't know. But that stuff really changed my life. What, I mean, you, what was the biggest thing that you remember from that age where you were like, because most kids that age, right? Like they might go mow some yards. Most of them just want to play video games or watch movies or hang out with their friends. Like what was one thing that changed for you from either listening to one of those or through the mentorship that Wally gave you? What was like one thing that you feel really pivoted you? Yeah, two things. Um, For one, the exposure that these guys that had done great things that I looked up to were just like me. And if they could do it, I could do it too. So there was this mindset instilled in me that if they can do it, they're not better than me, I can do it too. It gave me hope. But the second thing is when I picked up Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And uh, there was so much gold inside of that, that I learned so much, but I, I kept revisiting the mastermind principle. I kept understanding at a young age that I would never get to the heights I wanted to be in life on my own. That I couldn't self-isolate my way to success that I had to get around the right people in the right rooms, proximity to the right people. And really that's the secret to where I've gotten today is it's not, I'm special. It's I, I just get in proximity to the people that are farther than me and they leave you nuggets. And then if you actually go do what they share or what they're um, exemplifying through their actions, you get the same result. It's so crazy. We're going to come back to that because that's something I know you and I like can geek out on all day. So once you started kind of taking some action and doing stuff. I love that you brought up the story about like the phone and the camera, because I feel like so many people get stuck in, well, I don't have the right tools or I don't have the perfect plan yet. And I've got to write more stuff out. I mean, you and I have both seen people come into the world and they're like, I'm going to run my own business. And a year later, they still haven't done anything because they're trying to be so perfect with everything. And you just picked up your phone and you didn't do it perfectly. You're right. You weren't consistent. I'm sure some of those first videos sucked. I'm sure they were horrible. Oh, it makes me like, cringe today, but I did it. Yeah, you took action. If <laughs> I mean, if nothing else, the thing that I will say, knowing you over the last three years, you take action. If somebody says something or if somebody is doing something that is in your group of friends, you look at it and then you take action and you start doing. If somebody was stuck where you were wanting the $3,000 camera, wanting a better lighting setup, wanting a studio that they could film in. Side note, Cody and I both are in the process of moving this week. That's why our backgrounds suck, but we are still here doing this podcast to deliver value. What would you tell somebody that is stuck in that inaction point? How would you tell them to start taking action? Yeah, absolutely. Done is always better than perfect. And if you keep waiting around for everything to be perfect, you're never going to do it. Now, you've probably heard that before, but, but what, you, what you really have to understand is it's through the, the taking of the imperfect action that you figure it out. You don't attain perfection by thinking about it. You attain close to perfection by doing it. So, so for the person, let's say, Steve, because it's who I speak to, who wants to make more social media content, they hit objections of, I don't know what to talk about. I don't like the way I sound. I need to take speaking classes. I need better equipment to do it. Like all of these excuses. Yes, excuses. If that's you listening, you're making excuses. You could pull your phone out. You could literally have wrote down 10 nuggets off this podcast and go make a 30 second or less video today about it. Boom. You have 10 videos for the next 10 days. Yes, it's that easy but you're overthinking it and you're not doing it. And you're, and oftentimes the overthinking of perfection stops people or the insecurity of getting on video. Those are the two biggest things I see, Steve. Uh, but what I, I, you know, I run class. I, I, you know, I've taught hundreds of people around the world how to do this. We just finished a class of 30 people. And on day one in my class, I tell people you will, I make them commit. I make them commit to a contract that they will produce content daily for the entire program. 
And on day one, having not learned anything, I mean, we, we start, you know, with people by people in the psychology of all this, we throw them to the wolves. And so many of people told me in the offboarding process, how grateful they were that I gave them the nudge that they needed to just do it. And then they're like, this wasn't that bad. And then they got good at it. And then they got even better at it. And then they got results from it. And now they can't stop doing it. Hey, thanks for taking a moment to check out this episode of Grow Your Impact, Income, and Influence, the number one show helping you reach millions. Have you ever thought about building your own webinar or using public speaking to reach your ideal audience? Well, if you'd like my help with it, over the last several years, I have built more than 40 live events for clients just like you. In the last 18 months, I've helped 32 entrepreneurs build their webinar with over $5 million in cumulative sales. If you'd like to see how I can work with you, or if you'd be interested in having me speak at your event or be on your podcast, go to steven.coffee, that's S-T-E-V-E-N dot C-O-F-F-E-E, to book a short call with me and see how we can work together. All right, let's jump back to the episode. Well, that's so that is exactly the process, right? I think everybody should read some books, watch some YouTube videos, consume some content like this podcast, but then go do because the minute you start doing, you start like refining the process, figuring out what works for you. And some people are like, they're stuck on brand, right? I don't know what my brand is. I don't know what my core values are. I don't know what I should talk about. I don't know how I should talk. None of that matters. The minute you start producing content, you kind of refine that. So I know you were just talking about your class a little bit. I know you have a class coming up. It's the Influencer Academy. Tell us a little bit about that because I'm interested in that. I love seeing people take action. And that's basically what you're doing in the class is holding their hand and getting them to take some action. What's that look like? Yeah, absolutely. So we run we run an eight week class. It, it's basically like going to school for social media and it's eight weeks and we have class every single week and we have curriculum and we have accountability. And literally by the end of the eight weeks and through the eight weeks, you will be producing content daily. But what we've done, Steve, is I've worked with very high profile clients that are very busy and I've gotten it down for people that have me do it for their brands very high profile people where it only takes three hours of their time because my team is doing legwork, but there's all these other people that can do it in 10 hours or less with their own time. And we developed the system with these clients. Then we took that same system and we went over here and we taught it to where anybody can implement it. So the first thing is like you hit on it, know your brand, know your content pillars. Then you need to know the type of content that you can make and be educated on that process and video editing. So you're confident in actually making videos. Then you need to produce a content run sheet and you know exactly what you're going to record. Then you need to batch record it and knock it out in three hours, make all of your videos at once. Then you need to batch edit it. So they're drafted and ready to drop. Then you need to set reminders on your phone. Don't use the software. The platform is not going to show your content as many people. And you have an alarm go off at 9 a.m. Instagram, post it. It's already drafted. It takes 30 seconds. Then you have an alarm go off for TikTok at 4 p.m., post it. It's already drafted. It takes 30 seconds. And you can do that for Facebook and YouTube as well. So in the eight weeks, we teach people how to do that. But we also create community and masterminding around their content where we actually support you through the process. And we pull your videos up and we give you input and we help you improve what you're actually doing so that it you know registers more with your audience okay so you just gave in 30 seconds you just like flooded me with so much stuff so i want to break down some of those pieces there's two sides the first side is producing the content what are you making the content about how do you talk about it in a way that is engaging and relevant and fun and exciting and doesn't sound like ferris bueller's day off and bore people to death and put them to sleep and you know You don't want that. That's the content side. Then you have the actual technical side of how do you shoot it? How do you edit it? How do you release it for maximum impact? And you teach both of those things over eight weeks. So if you're listening to this, there is no way that you can do this in a day. Like once you get dialed in, you can, but you're not going to learn everything. But Cody, just to break it down a little bit more, let's dive a little bit into each side of that. So we're talking about content. Do you think people should just fire up their phone and talk about whatever's coming to mind? Or is there kind of a proven framework that you have that you take people through that shows them like these are the first 10 videos that you make, then these are the second 10 videos? Do you have a framework? And where does yeah, that come of course, from? We definitely have a framework. And, and the first part of the framework is identifying what your brand is. And what we do with our clients is we create three to five content pillars. Because all right, let's say, Steve, for example, what would you say your main pillar is that you're teaching through this to people? Um, I always teach. So 
I know mine. I teach webinars. I teach how to do story from stage and how to use story to sell. Those are okay. the three so story selling webinar stage events, all that. Right. So those could be content yeah. pillars for Steve, but let's go a little farther because people mm -hmm. buy Steve Warner. They're not buying your product or service. They're buying the result that you promised them. I don't want to skip over that, but first they're right. buying Steve Warner. So the best way to do this is use you as an example. So if I took Steve Warner and I said, what is your personal brand? What else do you want to share through your social media? And here's where you have to go. You have to go. Authenticity is the new authority. So for yep. me, I share about faith and I talk about family and I have some fitness and I also do motivational speaking. And I also have content daily and I teach content and I teach marketing. So I know my pillars that any of those things I just mentioned, I'll make content about. So for you, what would be two other pillars? It could be travel and lifestyle. Like what, what would be some other pillars for you? So travel, food, those are two. I used to work in fine dining. I love food. So I actually talk about that a lot. I talk about food and meals. And I always talk about travel, whether places I'm going, places I've been, experiences that I've had. So anyone who knows me knows that I am a big experience person. I've lived in Airbnbs for several years now because I love being out in the world and experiencing different places, different cultures, different things going on. So those are kind of, and I do I love it. So guys, listening to this, the travel and the food part is very authentic to who Steve is as a person, which makes us connect with him more. He's not just trying to sell us something. He's a real human being, an awesome guy that we can find common ground and commonality and we can connect with you on. So once you know these, these content pillars, I have all of my clients take notes in their phone. And if uh, iPhone, a lot of people have, or Samsung, and you can literally create these pillars in your notes and you can have the, the checklist basically, and you can begin putting topics underneath of each one. And then you can check them off as you make them. So this is like the crash course way to do it without spending any extra money. And then once you know that and you come up with ideas, you get creative about how you're going to make those videos. Are you going to do a face to camera? Are you going to use the captions app and add some background music and make it look, you know, cool like a lot of people are doing? Or maybe you're going to do a B-roll. Maybe maybe you're going to have some B-roll of, of Steve getting on an airplane, landing, going into an Airbnb, eating at a fine restaurant. And he has words on screen that tie to his brand and his business with some trending music. So then you, you identify, okay, what kind of content can I actually make? then you actually make it and you, you time block off the time to do it. And now you have content ready to drop and, and efficiency is the name of the game. If you're just doing content, whenever you're already failing, if you run it and build a system and process, like you would a company you're winning. So, okay, let's, I want to go back to your story. So when you first started making video, you were making some video here and there. When I got to know you, you were doing motivation checks every day, which were just like little 30 second, maybe like 90 seconds at the most. And you weren't like, you didn't have a lot of content in that, but you still got people engaged because people got to get know, like, and trust you and got to connect with you. And you were able to build a brand selling coffee mugs that still did a couple grand a month off of just that. So if you're listening to this interview and you're like, yeah, but I don't know what to share. Like Cody, literally like, tell us, like, I want to walk through your evolution of like sporadically making videos to doing daily motivation checks, which really didn't have a lot of content to what you're doing now, because I want people to see that evolution in their own life. Like if they, if you're listening to this and you're like, I'm worried, I'm not going to be able to create enough content. I don't know what to talk about. And I don't know the tech stuff. Cody's about to share with you how he learned all of that over a period of time and how he can share that with you. So go ahead, talk us, talk us through that. Yeah. So the journey for me was first making a decision of knowing the value of producing content daily and being in front of all of you every single day, how it was inevitably going to lead to you knowing, liking, trusting me, which makes you buy into Cody. And when you buy into Cody, Cody can sell his products and services to you. So from the entrepreneur part of my brain, I just need to say that. And, and for me, I made a commitment and a decision that I was going to make a video, rain or shine, if I, whether I was on my deathbed or not, every single day. And they were 30 second motivation checks, 30 seconds or less motivating people. 
And I would find ideas from books and from other people's videos and from my life and what was happening. And I would always just come up with something to talk about. It didn't have to be crazy content like Steve said. So I will say to the person listening to this, building the system and the process and the framework makes it easy. But at the end of the day, done is always better than perfect. And if you're not posting any videos and to get you started right now, you make a commitment. OK, I'm going to come up with a 60 second or less video every single day. You're already ahead of 95 percent of people. So that's what I did. And, and, and the compound effect takes place, guys. It's like going to the gym. You can't make a video every single day for this month and fall off next month and expect to get results. Just like you can't go to the gym this month and then start eating McDonald's next month and not going and expect to be ripped and in great shape and healthy. It doesn't work that way. And the same thing goes with your content. It's staying consistent over time that creates a compounded effect. And it's those little videos over time that add up to massive exposure, that add up to a couple videos going viral, getting hundreds of thousands of views, drawing in a bunch of followers. I mean, I've had clients that produce videos every single day for four months without growing their following more than 500 followers, then boom, 300,000 views on a video, three, 4,000 followers come in from that one video. Now every video after that gets more traction. So it's that consistency and the compound effect, Steve, that, that they have to be creating. So for me, those 30 sec motivation checks created a very loyal audience. And then as I figured out where I wanted to go with my life and my brand, I didn't wait. Here's one key point. I didn't really know what my brand was. But I still made videos before I knew that. Now, in my that program, is. we help you figure out your brand very easy because I've been through that and I know how painful it can be. But at the same time, even if you don't know your brand, people can still buy into you, know you, like you, trust you. Then when you do have a brand and you do have a product and you do have a service, you actually have people that want to buy it from you. That's, that is the key I want people to take away. You did not have it all figured out. You took action. And because you took action, you had people that were willing to buy from you when you put something in front of them that they could buy. That's the thing here. Like you figured out your message as you were going. And that, I, I know that people struggle with this. They're like, yeah, but I just want to do a little bit more. I want to like play with pieces. I want to have it all figured out. I want a script. If you just start you will attract people that are like you. Cody attracts people because you talk about faith, because you talk about motivation, you attracted people that like you for who you are. The thing is, if you're putting out, if you're trying to put out a bunch of content that is specifically around your features and benefits and the things that you do, people will price shop you because they're not buying you, they're buying the thing that you're selling. But because Cody attracted the people to him that liked him, when he put something out, first thing he put out was a coffee mug. And we all were like, good job putting something out, but you're not going to become rich. Like, I remember having the conversations with you about it. He sat like, me down, guys. He's like, I love it. I'll buy it. But let's talk about some other stuff you can sell. <laughs> Right. Like I was like, you're making $2 a coffee mug or like $4 a coffee mug. I don't remember what it was. So I was like, you got to sell a lot of coffee mugs. But from that though, you activated people and then you sold a mastermind. And I like, I think you did like 40 K or something. Yeah, we did literally well off that. And then we ended up doing another leg of that and opening it up again and we hit six figures. So my first year off leveraging the personal brand, we did six figures. I think we did like 132,000 that year was like the first year, like full disclosure with you guys. That was my top line. And, and okay. now this year we should be about 350 to 400 next year. We'll, you know, we're getting closer to seven figures. Like I don't mind sharing numbers with people. I think so many people hold that back. All of that comes from the videos I make. All of that comes from my vibe attracting my tribe, like Steve said. And then I found problems through the tribe I attracted that I could solve. That. That is, you just shared like a wealth of knowledge right there. So one more time, Cody hosts Influencer Academy. Eight weeks. If you're like, I, I'm struggling, I highly recommend like go 
connect with Cody. We have his information in the box down below. You can book a call with him. He'll walk you through exactly what you're going to learn in that eight weeks. He's going to tell you if it's a good fit for you or if it's not a good fit. But I can tell you, if you want to make videos and you want to grow your brand online, just doing some posts here and there, trying to send some stuff out, commenting, battling in the DMs, that's not the way you're going to grow your business. The way you are going to grow your business is to show up consistently over and over and over being in front of people. And Cody has the method. You've just heard how he went from inconsistently making videos to consistently making videos, doing six figures in his first year with coffee mugs and then a mastermind and then transitioning to the agency. So Cody, tell us just really quick, give us like the high level elevator pitch for the Academy. Yeah, absolutely. High level elevator pitch for the Academy is if you are looking to produce content every single day and put videos every single day and build a personal brand that actually attracts your ideal client to you and wants to do business with you, we're going to teach you that in eight weeks. It's that simple. We don't take on everyone. If you just want a big following and likes and followers and clout for your name, I'm not for you. Go find somebody else that sells some social media crap. I don't even look at mine through the same lens. I see that every single one of you have God-given gifts and talents inside of you. And then my job is to amplify that to people in the world so that you can attract people and you can change their life through the products and the services that you have created. And if you don't have a product or service, just by creating the brand and creating the content, much like myself, I was reversed for most people, you will figure out what that is for you. That's awesome. So one thing you just kind of touched on, you said who is not right for you. What is one of the biggest mistakes that you see people make when they're either trying to produce daily content or videos? What do you see like a lot of people recommend that you just think is really bad advice that people should avoid? Yeah, I mean, I actually think like the the worst advice that that I see people give is just anything around not putting out videos every single day. Like, you know, I thought, I've thought about this as you were just saying that I'm like, yeah, I could say this and that, but really at the end of the day, um, anyone that's telling you that you don't have to put videos out every single day is lying to you. We live in a very content heavy world. And at the end of the day, like your content doesn't have to be perfect. And I think that can go into it. Some companies come in and they spend so much time trying to focus on your brand and getting everything perfect and your color scheme and your logo and all of these things that really nobody cares about. What they care about is you connecting with them. So I, and I've had so many people come in and work with me that have been burned by marketers that don't know what they're doing, that have done everything but get the person in front of people every single day. So the worst advice is anything that takes away from you producing content daily, overthinking the process, overanalyzing the brand, trying to be perfect, trying to dial your message to perfection. That comes with time, guys. At the end of the day, you need to be putting videos out yesterday, every single day. Awesome. I got two more Really quick questions I want to touch on because I agree. I think daily content, I did daily emails for a long time. And I will tell you, people bought, I made more money, and I have more people engaged. The how long do you think is the minimum amount of time that somebody needs to put out daily content to start to get traction? Like if people are like, you know what, I think I'm going to do this, how long should they commit for? What's the minimum? Do you think like 60 days, 90 days? a year? How long do you think they the minimum is? Truthfully, the, the, the answer that's not pretty is that you don't do this unless you're committing to it for the long term. If you think you're going to put out videos for 90 days and make a bunch of money, don't do it. When I committed that, to this, I committed to a lifetime of serving people through my content. Now, I get that you can't get everybody to commit to a lifetime. Um, but what we've done with clients and the contracts that we typically do with our done for you is six month minimum contract. But honestly, it shouldn't be anything less than a couple of years. I remember listening to Alex Hormozzi recently when he talked to his YouTube guy and he told the guy that, that he's, he's in it for five years. He said, he said, I don't really care about the results are I'm committed to this for five years, putting out several videos on YouTube every single week. That is why he's winning because he's not so focused on what do I get for this? If I make a video every day, what do I get in 90 days? It's no, how do you serve your audience through who you are through video for years? And then because of that, you earn the right 
to sell them something. Yeah, I think, I mean, you're you're a hundred percent correct. I think ninety days you might start to see some traction. I think two years you're going to have an established brand that people can go back and they see that you've been doing it over and over and over. When people look, one of the things, like I'll have conversations with people and I'll send them videos from my YouTube that I filmed a year and a half, two, two years ago that answer their questions. And it allows people to see, I've had people come back and be like, man, you've been in this for a while. Like, I know I can trust you, which it's just the way that you share. It's the same way that you could go networking 25, 30 years ago, except now it is worldwide. You have no reason not to be putting out content. So my next question would be, if people were going to pick one platform, Facebook Live, YouTube Shorts, TikTok, Instagram, if they were going to pick one, where do you think people should be? TikTok, 100%. TikTok's the future, guys. It's the fastest growing platform. And it is becoming an SEO based algorithm. It's in a transfer right now. Even if you've seen your engagement drop recently, which we all have, you can't let that shake you out. The reason is they're retraining the AI technology to compete with Google and YouTube. What's happening with the younger generation is they're now searching for everything on TikTok. So let me put this into perspective. My girlfriend, who is a 32 year old woman, when she wants to find a date idea for me and her, Does she go on Google? Does she go on YouTube? Does she go on Instagram? Does she go on Facebook? No, she goes on TikTok and she looks up date ideas in San Diego, California, cool date spots in San Diego, California. And the key wording in TikTok has categorized people's videos through search engine optimization that are showing the best content for her to consume to find a date idea for us. If you want to crush right now and be ahead of the wave, you will get on TikTok and you will hit every single keyword possible in your niche. Just like when YouTube was new and everybody started doing that and now it's super saturated, you can get ahead even faster on TikTok. TikTok is the name of the game. It's not just little kids and it's only going to become more and more prominent. Okay, then you got to give us your top three tips for TikTok. If I was going to make TikTok, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, top three tips for TikTok is stop being scared of it because you don't know it. That's number one. People don't get on TikTok because they're not familiar with it. And we gravitate to the path of least resistance, which is what we know. Most of my clients are just like, I've just never used TikTok. I don't know how to use it. It's a little bit different. I'm uncomfortable with it. Get on the platform, create an account, start playing with it. And don't become annoyed with all the content that it's showing you. I know a lot of my married Christian clients, like I don't want to see a bunch of half naked girls. On TikTok, you have the ability to tell it, I don't like these videos. Stop showing me content like this. And you begin to train it to show you the content you want to consume. So number one, get familiar with the platform. Number two, make sure it's showing you content you want. Number three, you you have to make videos on it and you have to play around on it. You have to start learning the editing capabilities. It's studio capabilities and editing capabilities are beyond any other platform. What we teach in the program is to make it on TikTok and repurpose it on the other platforms. TikTok should be where the video is being edited and posted and then we have a way to copy or download it with no watermark and repurpose it and distribute it on the other platforms um and the other thing is like as you're learning how to use it do remember we do have google and we do have youtube and we do have guys like me that have classes like the influencer accelerator program there's no excuse that you can't learn this stuff don't wait till 10 books are wrote about it and everybody's already done it and made millions of dollars off of it. Learn today from the information that's accessible. That's awesome. I mean, I can I can vouch for TikTok that it is, I just got back from FHL. It is what everybody is talking about. If you wish you could have got into YouTube early, if you wish you could have got into Facebook early, this is your chance. Like, I feel like TikTok, A year ago, it was kind of in that like people were still like seeing if it was really going to do anything. It is proven. It is here to stay. It is not going anywhere. And people like right now is like early adopter phase, I would say for the next year, maybe 18 months, and then we're going to see it explode. So if you want to get in, now is the time to start doing it. And I agree. Like, I honestly, I'll share like, I didn't know how to not show videos on there because I I had the exact experience you're talking about. So I went to YouTube and I watched some videos and then I started training the algorithm. I don't spend a lot of time on it 
any longtime listeners of the show, you guys know I'm not a big social media person. I like to do face-to-face -face stuff, but I'm still putting out videos there and I'm building up an audience. I don't have to interact with a lot of people and I'm still getting a ton of traction. And we're yeah, building- Yeah, on that note, I want to speak to that because I think a yeah. lot of people misunderstand. Um, I don't spend much time on social media. What, Cody, you teach social media to build brands. And I don't spend time on, I don't consume content. I create content. And the only content that I consume is very strategic and it's the information that I want to go into my brain so I can learn the things I need to learn so I can take the actions I need to take so I can get the result I need to make. Um, I will say, though, people have a common misconception that if you're going to be big on TikTok or Instagram or Facebook or YouTube, that you always have to be on the platform. I disagree especially if you hire people that know the platforms and can show you how to produce the content to get the results you want. The only focus you need to have is creating it. Now, there is what we teach cultivating community where you should be engaging with your audience, you know, and commenting back. That does take a little bit of time, but you can time block off times just for that to where yeah. you're not on the platform all day. And if you're caught in the scrolling suck black hole, then, then you're using the platform the wrong way. You're either a consumer or creator. There's no in between. I would all day advocate to be a creator. I make my videos, I post my videos, and I don't look at it. I don't yep. even care if you liked it, com commented on it, or watched it. Really, I don't. I'm just doing my job, and I know the input, the leading and lagging measures. I'm putting in the leading measure. Therefore, I will get the lagging measure. And then I yep. just go in, and I communicate with my community now and then. That's it. Yep. I think that's brilliant. So, Cody... Thank you for sharing a wealth of information. If you guys felt a little bit triggered and you're like, I don't know about TikTok, that means that you need to go do it. Whatever the thing is that you feel resistance to is usually the thing that you need to do. Cody, thank you so much for sharing. If you guys are trying to figure this out, again, the link to contact Cody is in the description. This is a direct call link. This is going to book you direct time with Cody. You can either go to his Influencer Academy, you can find out how you can work with him, or if you just have a question for you for him, I promise you, Cody is a great guy. He will help you out. Cody, thanks so much for sharing time with me and my audience today. Absolutely. It was an honor to be here. Thanks, guys, and go make some content daily. Awesome. Till next time, take action, change lives, make money, and make some content. We'll see you soon. Are you looking to scale your business, but trying to figure out how to get your message across? Well, go to storyselling.how to grab my free course that will show you how to discover everything that you need to build your business through stories. These stories work whether it's in social media, email, or public speaking. There are five core stories that you'll learn. You'll be able to use all of them by the time you're done with this course. Again, that is storyselling.how. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure to tune in next time.